Oh, I didn't even clothing. notice you have a, a two-tone suit going on. Can You're I tell a wild you about man. This suit? Please do. Okay. Well. What's happening with that? company made this for me, LGFG. They made me a dozen suits. Yeah. One for each rule from 12 Rules for Life. Ah. The rules are printed on the back of this underneath ah. the collar. And this is a heaven and hell suit, so it's quite fun. So Which this one's is, hell? I'll show you in a sec. So this is, <laughs> hell's red, Joe. Come on. Jesus. But that's not really red. Well, it's like you a know, magenta. It's stylish. Right? Yeah, it's okay. Hell's magenta. You okay, know? hell's yeah, magenta. Yeah, it's designer hell. Ah, you nice. Know? So this is made out of sheep's wool, and this is made out of goat's wool. So that's pretty funny. And then in here, you've got your basic heaven lining and your basic oh, hell lining. Okay. Yeah, so. I don't think I've ever seen a man walk around with a, I think you're one up. Am I one up? Yeah, you're one up. Are you? No, that's no, good. No, you're good. It's, oh. it's, it's double breasted. Double breasted. Yeah, Fancy. Yeah. Yeah, Fancy. got one suit with you in the lining too. Oh no! I was going to wear it today. I thought about wearing it. It's a, it's a black suit with platinum s s uh, wires in it, which is kind of cool. And inside, it's got black and white images of like uh, really sharp, sharp, harsh graphic images of you and Brett Weinstein and Ben Shapiro and Russell Brand and, you know. As an assortment to the oh that whole Sam, intellectual Sam dark Harris web too. thing that's Sam's the guys, in there. man <laughs> Sam's in there too yeah 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 I still have hope for Sam Harris yeah me too <laughs> me too yeah I hope he I hope he makes a comeback so. I mean he's not really going away he's just got some weird opinions yeah well but there's a, there's plenty of that floating around well you know I think when you have like complex fascinating brains they go off in all kinds of different directions don't this, you think this is this is one of the dangers of being creative right. Most mm. creative ideas are wrong, and a good section of those wrong ones are fatal. But Oof. now and then you get one that's necessary. So Yeah, we were talking about the Twitter files before yeah. uh, we got rolling and uh, what the new stuff is. So the, the new stuff has something to do with AI and uh, some sort of content moderation? Oh, yeah. Well, Tabby re released some Twitter files today on, well, on, or, or on Twitter, obviously, and they're going through the code. Now, I don't understand the technical details, but, you know, you don't exactly know when you see the output of a, of a, of a code-generated system exactly what rules it's using to sort the information. I suppose that's the equivalent of shadow banning. And there's all sorts of, there was apparently all sorts of directives built into the code to amplify certain kinds of messages and, you know, de-amplify others. And so, apparently, Musk is doing what he can to, to uh, clean that up. Uh, Ruben reported that the other day. Yeah. And then Tybee today, he was talking more about the whole uh, Russian collusion mm. fabrication. Yeah. So that's also real fun. Well, how about the one guy that was going after Trump, who it turned out was actually in collusion with the Russians? Oh, yeah, that's a rough one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the best defense is a good offense, you know, and so I guess I guess. Yeah, I guess. Mm -hmm. I know. But We're it's in a crazy like, world. Why would anybody not think that that was going to come around to get them? Uh, it's amazing how often people don't think that, you know, what they're doing isn't going to isn't going to end up aimed squarely at them. Well, this Twitter thing, right? Like, they never suspected that someone like Elon was going to come along and buy Twitter and then, in an unheard of tactic, have a bunch of journalists review everything in all of their Slack meetings and all their emails, look under the code, look under the wiring under the machine and find out how it was actually yep. running. And why? Well, I mean, the fact that anyone would ever think that any of this stuff is a good idea that people don't understand like the dangers of censorship. They don't understand what, where this leads to. Yeah, well, we're seeing a little bit of that emerge on the right now, you know, which is kind of frightening to me. So I, I'm an admirer in many ways of what's going on in Florida, you know, with DeSantis. But him and Rufo, who I also think has got a bit of a clue, are trying to, what would you say, limit or even ban critical race theory. And the problem with that is you can't define it, right? Right. So how do you... How do you control something you can't define? And the answer is you battle it out on the battleground of ideas. Because as soon as you start to try to define it and then try to censor it, well, first of all, that's just going to grow because that's how those things work. You know, like where does, where does critical race theory shade into Marxism? Well, who the hell knows? Where does Marxism f f shade into socialism? Well, that's an even harder question. Then where does socialism shade into, you know, just being on the side of the working class? 
well, all that's fuzzy beyond belief. And so once you get to the point where the government has to step in and regulate, say, what education systems are doing, you're already in deep trouble. And because it can't, I don't see how it can really be done because I, I can't define critical race theory. You know, I mean, more or less, you can get some sense of the cloud of ideas that's associated with it. But but trying to draw the lines, how are you going to do that? And then, of course, you enable inevitably, no matter what your goal is to begin with, you're going to control a certain form, let's say, of pathological communication, misinformation. That's just going to play into the hands of people who like to censor, and that's just as likely on the right as it is on the left. Mm. So, no, it's a real dangerous game. And is the problem like the term critical race theory is it's open to interpretation? Yeah, well, it's often even hard, except in retrospect, to understand a lot of what these things actually are, you know, because new clouds of ideas emerge and they kind of have an animating spirit and they, ha they have a set of associated, what would you say, presumptions, and you can often only see what that is in retrospect. You know, it took me a long time to understand e whatever existentialism was enough to sort of define it, phenomenology, these different schools of thought that occupied the thoughts of... Uh, of psychological investigators over a couple of centuries, postmodernism, modernism, you know, it's it's not an easy thing to to extract out the gist of those and define them. Plus, plus as I said, they have very fuzzy boundaries. So, well, what I saw with DeSantis was there was uh, he had a concern that they that it wasn't just black history that they were putting into this critical race theory, but that he saw that there was queer theory which was in this thing that they were teaching in school. And like, what does that have any, how does that have anything to do with black history? Like, yeah. why is queer theory inserted yeah, into Yeah, well, that? I, think, I think the way those are linked is essentially through what you might regard as, well, it's an implicit Marxism, but it's even deeper than Marxism. So if you're a Marxist, you basically, you have a heuristic that simplifies the world. And that heuristic is that you can understand any social relationship from, well, from an intimate relationship all the way up to the state by just dividing the parties, let's call them the narrative partners in a discussion or an interaction into those who are oppressed and victimized and those who are taking advantage of them and profiting. That's basic Marxist theory of economics. And there's obviously some truth in that because when systems become corrupt, that's how they operate, right? It's exploitation and victimization. And every system tends towards corruption. And so, and if you're if your eyes are open a little bit, or if you're, let's call it, if you've moved from naivety to cynicism, then you can see every interaction as a power dynamic. 